Ours Game. Chapter 2, My Name Is. Written by Homura. I have been quadriplegic for about two weeks and I admit it's creepy. The servants are very careful with me and do everything for me, even the delicate spots. Still, he had done a fine job, God, I looked exactly as I asked him, blonde with green eyes a bit like my sister and my father. Being able to choose my appearance was one of the conditions of my coming here. Another condition was that I could choose the country in which to reincarnate, the family and the social status. Among other things, I had the choice between a newborn and an already existing body. I opted for the already existing body but lack of luck I was struck by a bomb from my reincarnation. I spent six months under the bandages waiting for the other to fix me. It's an extreme case next time I couldn't do anything for you. He said. I don't say thank you. TCH. Another thing I asked him to give me a free body to grow. I didn't want to be affected by some weird pathology or be a dwarf. It would be stupid to die of this kind of thing. So I received some form of blessing. Master Zell. Uh, said the servant. Your friend is finally here. I didn't even move my head and just stared at him blankly. She let him in and closed the door behind us. A young boy of my age also blonde with black eyes. He was wearing shorts and a blue sweater over his shirt. I just had a white shirt and a sheet covering my legs. The boy opened the back door, glanced up, then closed the curtains before coming towards me. It's good no one is there. I felt a breath of fresh air come over me and I got up from my chair. I did some stretching and hugged him. It's good to see you again, Fred. I said. Softly you serve a little hard there. Friedrich Leinberg. His father is a good friend of mine and he is also my childhood friend. I've been pretending for a week and he's the only one in the know. At first it was a test to see if I could trust him and it turned out to be very positive. And the books I asked for? Like clockwork. He pulled out several books of stories from under his sweater. To be honest I don't even want to know how it all held up in his clothes. It was not easy to steal all this from my father. I do not doubt it. Mine has nothing of interest in his library. I say aligning the documents. In fact it's true that you lost your memory? Ah yes small detail, since I remained impassive for a long time the doctor diagnosed a transient amnesia while in fact I just pretend. The doctors of the time I swear to you. Do not worry. I tell him with a smile. I can't forget you fried. In truth, if I was doing all this comedy, it was precisely to assimilate the memory of this body. Ours could not interact on certain things so he reincarnated me in my eight-year-old body. It's like watching a series in time-lapse, there I have to catch up. You plan to tell them when in fact. But calm down fried, don't you see that this is the perfect opportunity to miss class? I say smiling. I envy you. I go to school like everyone else, while you have private lessons at home. He said sulking. There is nothing to envy a paralyzed child who can not even close his eyes by himself. Very funny ha ha. When they wipe them off. I pounce on him, covering his mouth with my hand. Someone is approaching. I got back in position and made the myth as usual. The door opened, it was my little sister who came to see how I was. Oh Mel how are you? Is that you Friedrich? How is big brother? I could not tell you. He said, staring at me. It is especially in your interest not to say anything. Thought I. It makes me sad to see him like that. Him who was so lively before. She left the room and I rushed to lock the door. That's bad, you could at least tell her. The fact that it is my little sister does not justify that I place my trust in her. I replied. What do you mean? Don't get me wrong, she's still a child and she could betray me by mistake. And you don't trust me? He asked, turning his head. But yes, but if let's see how it takes a lot. I'm not going to offend the only friend I have in this world. What is this medallion? He was talking about the collar with the eagle emblem around my neck. A gift from my father. I answered promptly. Really? I've never seen him around your neck yet. 
it's because he gave it to me after my accident. You are too smart fried. For your own good believe me. Ah that makes sense. And if you explain some things to me about the cards instead. Yes so. This cross was my means of communication with ours, no way I could tell him about it. But I have to say, I loved killing time with him. I spent two years playing sick, Friedrich came to see me every weekend and during the holidays. We played in secret, and the rest of the time I learned more about the geopolitical situation of the country thanks to the information stolen by Fried. I also inquired about what makes up the current military equipment in short, we were in Europe 1900, but the calendar of this world showed year 1010. Basically I was born in the year 1000 here. One of my favorite periods and the one that I know the best. Over time I had become really close to Fred almost as much as Seb. I wonder how he is doing now that I'm dead. The day came when I decided to stop acting. Dad. I say dryly. Hearing these words he had tears in his eyes. My sister and my mother too. To them it was like a miracle and I felt bad for them. My father brought in doctors to examine me while my body was in great shape and not at all numb. After a few weeks of rehabilitation I finally joined the Royal Academy where Fred was. I had trouble convincing my father who wanted me to continue private lessons, but what arguments can you make in front of a child who spent two years in his room? Come on daddy, said yes. I have hardly any friends my age and Mel is too kidding. But you can learn while staying here at home. Did he press? This is just theory. And out of the question to remain trapped here again. My family will not decide my fate. Father how do you want me to take over from this family if I don't even have a minimum of social contact? My remark made it tilt for a few minutes. He fixed me with his usual stern gaze but I remained calm with a confident look. It is okay he sighed. Awesome. You are the best of fathers. I now had confirmation that he could not refuse me anything. I found myself in primary school of course, but it was there where we trained the elite of the nobility, in other words, half of the students are morons infused with themselves. We are welcoming a new student today. Said the teacher. I then entered the room at the request of the teacher. My gaze was firm like my father and my step assured. When I faced them I felt that some were intimidated. I count on you to be nice to him, especially since he lost his memory after a serious accident and had to stay locked up in his home for almost two years. Really? Two years locked in his room. I heard the whispers and rumors spread. More mysterious you die. I saw Fred who had already reserved a place for me. If you can say your name to the class, please. Madam, can I first sing the hymn Elysian? The hymn? It's the first thing I learned during my rehabilitation. I tell him in a friendly voice. Okay, go. So I started the country's anthem. Golden voice was not among my requests in ours, but I knew how to play on the notes to give something original. And it worked, so much so that the other children started singing with me. Even the pupils of the other classes joined us in our movement and soon the school. The hymn to the Elysian was something sacred so sing it with passion and all the people will follow you. When I finished the song I received a thunderous applause. Wonderful. Said the teacher from the next room. What is your name? What is your name young man? They kept asking my name and who I was. Why make them wait? I raised my right arm in the direction of the sky like the greeting of a certain people that I know well. My name is Alpha Zel Kylam. Definitely I loved this world. And when I grow up you all would work for me. I say with my sly smile. Heil Elysee. End of chapter.